last week I began a new series of message entitled Greater Things. Who who listened to this word that was blessed by this word last week? Raise up your hands. Amen. Hallelujah. And today we are going to receive the second part of this message. And uh, today's message is burn down what prevents you from experience greater things. What you have to do? Burn down what prevents you from experiencing greater things. Close your eyes, please. Let's pray. Beloved Father, we are honored for your presence in this place. Jesus, we love you. We love you. And our great desire now is to listen to your voice. Because your sheep listen to your voice. And we are here to listen from you. Speak to every one of us. For those who are here and those who are listening to me on the internet, bless all of them. Open up their ears to receive this word. And they can experience greater things in their lives. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Blood brothers, as I told you, I believe that God has greater things for us. We are entering in a new season. This is what God spoke to me. When I was coming from Brazil, God spoke to me. We are entering in a new season. And God has prepared greater things for all of us. Do you believe that? Yeah. I am talking to some of the people from the church. And I, I am receiving many testimonies. Yesterday I was talking to some of the, the leaders of the church and, and, and that person said, Pastor, I know that we are entering a new season and God is preparing something new for us. I can see or can notice that in the air because God is moving. And I want you to read today a text from 1 Kings, 1 Kings verse 19 to 21. Because through this text, you, are, you need to understand that God has something greater for you. Amen? Verse 19. 1 Kings 19, verse 19 to 21. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of, of Safat. He was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen. And he himself was driving the twelve pair. Elijah went up with, with, with him and threw his mantle on him. Verse 20. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother goodbye. He said. Uh, and then I will come with you. And Elijah replied, Go and come back. Elijah replied, what I have done to you? So, 21, so Elijah left him and went back. He took his uh, yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. Now, pay attention. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people and they ate them so he set out to follow Elijah 
and became his servant. I'm going to read again the last part. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people. And they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. Beloved brothers, the Bible says in, in Hebrews 15 verse 4, everything that was written here, everything that was written in the past was written to teach us today. Amen? Everything. And, and today we are going to see many things and you are going to receive a word from God. Here, I think you have, if you have read this text you were before, God called Elisha for a greater and better life. Amen? God called him to a greater life. And as soon as he heard the calling of God, what he did, he went to say goodbye to his mother and, and father and returned and, and he burned the plowing equipment cooked he did a barbecue with the oxen and gave it to his people beloved brothers Elisha he was from a prosperous family if you don't know because they had 12 pairs of oxen to plow the land and still he gave up himself for everything and he lost everything so he could respond to this calling that he received he left he left it all to be with Elijah and follow him and the Bible says that Elisha became his assistant in a low position and he began as nothing more than a servant right he started as a servant and this text can teach us a lot and bring us profound revelations Did you know that uh, this time that uh, in, in this text of 1st Corinthians 1st Kings 19 this text was the first time that Elisha appeared in the Bible who did you know about that this text is the first time that Elisha appeared in the Bible never before and also he was not a prophet you need to understand who was Elisha the one who received this calling he was not a prophet he was not a leader he was not a wise man he had never preached never preached he had never done any miracles he lived a simple ordinary life When I look at that, that he was a simple person, that excites me a lot. Because he wasn't anything special. He was one ordinary person, just. He worked in the field. And he was only a farmer. And his main job was what? Plowing the land. Can you see that how simple person he was? Just a farmer. And Elisha lived quite life until the day he received a calling to live a new life. This may, this may sound a lot like your life. This is why I'm saying that, that excites me. 
because maybe you are in the same position. You are going to look at you and say, Pastor, I came from a poor family. I never preached before. I never did one miracle in the name of Jesus. I, I never did greater things. But God is calling you today. <laughs> and he wants, He's calling you for greater things. And also about this quiet life, there is nothing wrong, my beloved brothers. Nothing wrong with having this way. Why? Because you work, you make money, you have your work routine every day, right? You go to work. But the problem is when you start living only for this. Just with this simple life and you don't want anything more just that simple routine every day but you have no more passion in your heart for Jesus and the, and what you are living this has become a problem when you are live what you are living is just religion no more passion in your heart and you start doing all of that automatically you go to the service you go to the cell meeting you you go to the worship team but everything is automatic your heart is not in fire for god you are you you are not expecting greater things for god and those who live life religiously does not expect greater things. Are you expecting greater things in your life? Because if you are not expecting, sorry to say, you are living a religious life. If you are not expecting. Thanks God, some people here, they are expecting. They are in fire for God. And this is the people that they are going to receive. Because we need to have this kind of expectation. When you become religious, your spiritual life, relationship with God, relationship with the church, your relationship with your, with your brothers and sisters, all become monotonous. And we start living a common and, med and mediocre life. When we enter in this monotony, we lose our passion for Jesus. And Jesus he is no longer the most important in our life. Or He's not the first one or the most important. And how we, in which place is Jesus in your life? If you have come to accept this, I have one news for you. If you accept this religious life with no fire, you are going to abort this life you are going to destroy the best of God and you never get the life that God has planned for you but despite of settling for this mediocre life God still has a plan for you amen he still has a plan and if you look to this text, one day, after another regular and common afternoon, Elijah appeared to Elisha. Can you imagine? After one day, common day, maybe he worked, he was plowing before, and then Elijah appeared to Elisha. And one day, Elijah will show up. One day, Elijah can show up to you. Has Elijah ever shown up into your life? Hmm? Have you asked Elijah to appear in your life? How is your heart 
Do you kneel in prayer every day and ask for something to happen in your life? Something greater? Do you cry to God every day for something new? Hmm. Glory to God. Or do you no longer have any more ex expectation? My beloved brothers, when expectation dies in our life, you are dead. Since I was born again, I always have had many expectations in God. Always. Always I have some expectation. Even when I was new believer in the church. When, whenever I used to go to a service. I used to ask God. Speak. Use the preacher. Speak to me. I was seated like you. Always when I used to go to church. And I, I was praying at home. And say God use the preacher today. And today I want to hear your voice through the preacher. Also, I used, I used to ask God, God, perform miracles through my leaders. Perform miracles in the church. Also, beloved brothers, I, I do not miss any service. I never stayed home because of laziness. God knows what I'm talking to you now. I never stayed at home because of laziness. I don't want to go to the church. I don't want to go. Never. My heart was ours. For me not to go to the service like I was laying down, dying. And... and and also, and when I was sick, I would not miss out on a meeting. Even when I was sick. For the day you, you do not show up, you miss on something from God. The day you don't go, you're going to miss something from God. I have one testimony, maybe you have heard. One testimony that happened with me. Years ago, Fabiana uh, made lunch on Sunday, and she cooked a uh, delicious fish. And when I was eating, it was so delicious, and when I was eating, one fish bone got stuck in my throat. It was very painful, because I could not breathe. breathe. When I breathed, then hurted my throat also I could not speak I had to go to be quiet quite, very quiet I could not talk or even breathe because it hurts too much and I remember Fabiana said I think you should we should take you to the hospital because you are in pain then I thought and I said Honey, sorry, no. First, I go to the church. If needed, when finished, then I go to hospital, if needed. I spoke this way to her. Then, I went to the church. When I was there, I could not sing. Because it was very painful. I could not sing. And I, I just stayed quiet. I kneel down. I remember I knew though, and I started worshiping the Lord. Love, brother, sorry, I need to say something now. Sometimes I look to the church when the people, they are singing to the Lord. Some people, they are worshiping the Lord in this way. There's no passion, no relationship, no fire. And then I, I remember I knew down. And I started worshiping the Lord with pain. I could not speak. I could not sing. As soon as the worship team finished that time, I sat down. Then, then I noticed the fishbone disappeared while I was worshiping the Lord. 
simply disappeared while I was worshiping the Lord. We need to have expectation when we go to the presence of God. Do you have expectation when you come to church? How is your heart today? Elijah can still appear in your life. Elijah can still appear to you. Beloved brothers, Elijah showed up. He showed up to Elisha. The greatest prophet, Elisha. The man who confronted 400 prophets of Baal. The one who prayed and fire came down. Who prayed and made it rain after three and a half years without rain. And rain came down. Please pay attention. The presence of Elijah had the potential to change the life of Elisha forever. And I want to talk about the, the step that you also may have a greater life. Amen? And I want to talk about these three steps that we can see in this text. First step. You must have what? Perception of the presence of God. This is the first one. You, you, you must have perception. Of the presence of God. Beloved brothers, Elisha submitted himself to Elijah. Because Elijah represented God. And Elisha realized that. He realized. Greater things happen when you become more aware of the presence of God in your life. Amen? Would you like to experience more things, greater things in your life? You need to be more aware. Just as Elijah came personally to Elisha with one invitation, God is here to invite you as well. I'm going to repeat again. This is important. Just as Elijah came personally to Elisha with one invitation, God is here to invite you as well. Amen? God still uses man to speak to talk to us. Do you believe that? Yeah. Just as God used Elijah, Elijah to speak to Elisha, God sent me here today to give you this invitation. Do you receive it? Who wants to receive one invitation from God today? Just a few of people. Who wants to receive one invitation from God today? 80%. Who wants to receive one invitation from God today? Oh, glory to God. Much better. And God is inviting you, my beloved brother. God is inviting you. Come with me. Do you want to live new things? So follow me. Walk with me. God is saying to you, recognize His presence in your life. God is telling you, come. And walk with me and I can turn your life around. I can lead you to bigger things. God is inviting you now. Are you going to accept? His presence. His presence, blood brother, does not bring condemnation. Okay? His presence, it doesn't carry disapproval. Even if your sins are terrible, He wants to forgive you if you re repent. If you repent and say, Lord, forgive my sins, He will forgive you. Because he doesn't, He's not here to bring you condemnation. God wants to take you from a simple, ordinary life and to lead you to, uh, to amazing things. Amen? This is what God wants to do with us. To bring you from this simple, ordinary life to an amazing life. Lord brother, if you read the story of Elijah and Elisha, 
you are going to know, notice many things. I have read many times. And one thing I noticed. Elijah, he performed seven miracles. Elisha performed 14 miracles. <laughs> Because he, re he received that anointing and he walked with him. And he obeyed him. Will you hear his voice? His presence is here today. He is, he is with me. He is with you. And, and he is with all of you that are listening to me right now on the internet in your house. Because he is one omnipresent God. He is everywhere. And his presence is here now with you. And now he's with all of us in this church. Do you realize that he's here? But most of people, they don't realize. They stay quiet. They have no expectation in their hearts. They don't take God so serious. Are you listening to his voice? If you hear his voice, you will follow his direction. If you hear his voice, will you follow his direction? Amen. Will you continue to follow or you will continue to follow your own plans and to live in sameness and mediocrity? In order for you to live one extraordinary life, you need to make one decision. Okay? In order for you to live this kind of life, you need to make one decision. Why? Because the Bible says, beloved brother, as soon as Elisha heard the voice of Elijah, he left his plans. Follow me, please. He left his plans, his family, and his people behind and followed Elijah. He ran and went after the calling of God. He didn't say, okay, I'm going to think. He ran. I see so many people today that know God's path. They know God's path. They have heard the voice of God. They have even heard their calling, but they are too afraid to make decisions. Maybe you are afraid to make this decision. Or they followed it only halfway through. Or decided to return to plowing the land because it was safe. Some people said, oh, I think it's better to go back to plow the land. Because, Pastor, it's safe. It's better. It's more comfortable. It's more comfortable to stay with people they knew than to follow the calling to live greater things. They do, this kind of people, they do not want to burn their plows because they do not understand that it is God that are calling them. And they are stagnant and miss out to the supernatural of God. Second point. Second point. Greater things happen when you understand that God has a calling for you. What did I say? When? Greater things happen when you understand. You have to understand. The calling of God. Then the second point is this. Or first you need to be you, you need to be aware not only of his presence, but he came to all to call us out. Okay? Some people they are aware, but they are not following the calling. I want to ask you, are you with me? 
Are you with me? How did Elijah approach it, Elijah? How? Oh, yes. The Bible says Elijah went up to him and threw his mantle on him. Or Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle over Elisha. And I want to talk about this throwing over the mantle. It has some different meaning in the Bible. And I want to teach you today. The, it has at least two meaning. Throwing the mantle in the Bible has at least two meaning. The act of casting the mantle means a choice has been made. First, okay? A choice has been made. I am choosing you, Elijah. Just it. I am choosing you, Elijah. Throwing the mantle. Okay? Second, the act of casting the mantle was also one act of adoption. Are you with me? Okay? was an act of adoption it was the act of taking over a father cast the mantle and say this is now my son I'm adopting him okay two things choosing and also declaring now you are my son I think you remember in the second king chapter 2 that's why Elijah Elisha screamed and he said my father, my father the chariots of Israel and its horsemen when, when Elijah was taken then Elijah said my father, my father talking about Elisha Elisha could have reject his calling, right? Elisha could, could have rejected the calling, but he accepted to be under the authority of Elijah. Casting the mantle meant, I saw you as my successor. I have a promise for you. All that I have is now for you the anointing and the authority I have I will pass on to you and this will happen when I cast the mantle over you casting the mantle is a statement of successor paternity he was saying you are not made for this you are not made to spend your life behind the plow you are not to to be in the dirt because I have something bigger to you. Amen. And Elisha was a simple man in the field. But he listened. You have a bigger calling for your life. Can you say amen? You have a bigger calling. God wants you to have a greater experience with him. And the mantle has been cast over Shalom. The mantle has been cast over your life. And God is saying, come and follow me because I have bigger things for you. Yeah. God has wonderful experience for you. Do you want that? Yes. Hallelujah. Elisha received the mantle. And we, are, and we are being offered the same mantle. You are going to see when you read the Bible. But now comes the time to make a choice. Pay attention. Elijah came. Threw over him the mantle. But he had a choice. He had a choice. I will follow or not. Will Elijah choose the greater life or not? Will Elisha choose to go back to plow the ground or he will follow Elijah? Will he stay in the sameness in his safe, normal life or will he go after 
Elijah and do greater things. Some people say they have not calling. I have heard that. Some people say, when I'm talking, some people say, no, pastor, <laughs> you have a calling, not me. This is a lie. What did I say? This is a lie. Don't say that to me. Sorry. You never, if you say to me, you don't understand the Bible. You never read the, this Bible. Some people say they have not a calling. But the spiritual truth is that everyone here in this church. Everyone here in this church. Everyone who is listening to me right now on the internet. They have a calling. Everyone. If you read uh, Matthew 22. There is one parable in Matthew 22. I have no time to read, but you can read at home. Then Jesus said, and that God prepared a great banquet and sent to call everyone to his banquet. Have you read that? And but most of them gave excuses and say, I cannot go because I have things to do. I have to work, I have other place to be. I, but God said, go and call everyone. That's, if you read the end, that's why in Matthew 22, verse 14, Jesus said, this is why Jesus said, let's read all together. For many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. But beloved brothers, many people think that God chooses only a few. And that God is unfair. God is unfair. Because God has his darling ones. <laughs> or God has his chosen ones. But this is not true. This is not true. All are called, but few are chosen. All are called, but few are chosen. Why? Because they do not accept the calling. Did you get? All are called, but they do not accept the calling. The calling is for everyone. Could you repeat that? The calling. It's for everyone. I'm going to read another verse. Isaiah 6, 8. 6, 8. Let's read all together. I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then Isaiah said, What he said? God said, my brother, to whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? If God, God is saying to this place, to whom shall I send? Let me see. Ah, one hand's there, one there. Yeah. Okay, this is what happened. My beloved brother, God said, God asked, to whom I'm going to send? Who raised up his hand? Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah said, hear him. Hear him. But could it be? Isaiah could be another prophet. Could be anyone. But he said, this is my opportunity. I am here. You can use me. Are you going to answer God today? All of us are called. But few chosen. Because most will say, sorry, I can't go. I have many things to do. I have my job. I have my family. I have my parents. I have my country. I have something to do. And I can't. Okay. It's your choice. For you to, to give one example. 
If I ask you today, how many of you want to have a lunch or a dinner with me today? How many of you? One, two. Okay, thank you. No, just two. Don't raise up your hand anymore. Just two. <clears throat> but only two ra rose up their hands. Then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to choose you two. Why? Why? Because only two rose their hand, your hands. I'm going to choose you. It's, a, it's a, a, what happened with God. God is saying, who to whom I'm going to stand? Who's going to listen to my voice? Most of people say, he's not talking to me. Then there is all of you. All of us are called, but few are chosen. Why? Few are saying, you can count on me. You can send me. Can you say amen? Being chosen by God is the result of your answer and your decision. Let's read all together. Being chosen by God is the result of your answer and your decision. If you want bigger things or bigger life, better life with God, raise up your hands to Him and say, God, you can count on me. Amen. Who wants bigger things? Who wants bigger things? Blood brother. Elisha said, I do. <laughs> this is what happened. Al Elisha threw his mantle and then Elisha said, I do. You can count on me. He didn't miss the opportunity. If you read, my blood brothers, if you read uh, 2 Kings chapter 2, you are going to see that it was his choice. He, were, he was chosen because of his choice. You are going to see. Why? Because I have no time to read but you can read at home. Elijah said, if you are faithful to follow me, you will experience greater things. If you go with me to Jericho, if you go with me to Gilgal, if you go with me to Bethel, you will have double portion of my spirit and you will be my successor. Read it. Chapter 2. What defines your life here on this earth is not your calling. But it is your answer to the calling. Let's, let's say again. What defines your life here on earth is not your calling. But it is, it is your answer to the calling. Did you get the point? You are called. You have a calling, but what is your answer? <laughs> it's your response. God, I will give you my life to experience greater things. Amen? And the last point. Third, if you want to live a greater life, you have to burn your clothes. Clothes. If you want to have a, a greater life, you have to burn your clothes or burn down. This is the message of today. Burn down what prevents you from experiencing greater things. Burn down. Bigger things happen when you burn your clothes. And, and all know, and we all know God has more for us, but we did not try it. We all know. I, I know God has more for me. But most of us don't burn our plows. Why do most believers do not experience greater things from God? Why? Because we do not burn our plows. Bigger things happen when we burn down the things from our old life. That's why Elijah, Elisha did. When Elijah called Elisha for a bigger life. Beloved brothers, even though 
he without knowing what he was getting into he decided he didn't know what would happen in the future he, because Elijah didn't give him all the explanations but he said I will you can count on me I will follow this man I will do in a such a way that I cannot ever come back and he said okay I'm going to do it in, in a way that I'm not going to come back anymore. Then he said, please, give me just five minutes. Just give me half day. I'm going to go to say goodbye to my mom, to my daddy. I'm going to destroy everything that I, I was attached to. Because I don't want to go back to my past. I don't want to go back to that, that old life. I don't go, want to go back to that thing that is holding me. I will not go back. I'm going to burn my clothes. I will sacrifice my ox. Why? Because he is breaking up with his old life. All that represented stability, routine, accommodation, life close to the family, security. He said, I'm going to burned out God has bigger plans than you imagine but if you want to re reach it you have to do what Elisha did burn down your blow look to the person next to you and say you have to burn down your blows yeah you need some clothes in your life you need to look and say hmm bye bye burn down everything that connects you to the past everything that holds you back from living the new and the supernatural but I know to do that doing this sometimes hurt us isn't it hurt us there is a price to pay to receive the mantle there's a price he had to say mommy daddy sorry bye bye sorry bye bye there's a price to pay and Jesus said the same if you read the Bible Jesus said if you want to be my disciple deny yourself take up your cross and follow me Jesus said the same the story is the same it didn't change in the Old Testament and the New Testament there is a price to pay to receive direction and guidance. There is a price to pay to be under the ministry that God has planned for us. There is a price. Burning the clothes can mean leaving the job because of the kingdom of God. Some people say, no, I can't to quit my job. I can't to change place or towns because of, no, no, no. Burning the plows means to, to spend money or to earn less money because of the kingdom of God. But, but in this time, no one say amen. Yeah. I said, burns to the plows means to receive less money. No, this is not from God. This is from the devil. Oh, because uh, God loves me. <laughs> I have heard that. God loves me and he wants the best for me. <laughs> Jesus said, you have to die. <laughs> you have to die for yourself, to deny yourself. Don't believe in this prosperity gospel. I'm sorry. For me to become a pastor, I lost 80% of my salary. Ah, this is from the devil. <laughs> Some people say, I lost 80% of my salary to become a pastor. 
Yeah, let's say, no, I'm, I can't do that, Pastor, sorry. <laughs> Burn your clothes means to lose your reputation. Mm, to lose your reputation. To humble yourself. And to, you have to ask forgiveness to people. And say that you have made the wrong decision. But some people say, no, I can't. No, I am the right one. I'm not going to say I'm wrong. My, my reputation, Pastor. And my reputation. I'm going to say that I am wrong. I can't. Burning the clothes is a matter of trusting in God. And surrendering everything to God. Even if it costs you. Even if it costs you. Yeah, many people don't say it, yeah. Yeah. Burning your clothes is a matter of trust in God. Even if it costs you. In order for you to have this greater life, my beloved brothers, you have to surrender and to give over all you have. Who do, would you like to have this greater life? I want to have this greater life. Who do you stand up, please? When you burn your clothes, pay attention, please. I didn't finish. Please, I didn't finish, okay? I know that when you burn your clothes, this thing that you really love, is to burn your clothes, this thing that you really love. And when you burn your, your clothes, there, you have one feeling that you are missing out. On something you are missing out <sighs> but oh burn your clothes you bring you freedom to go for greatness when you take this decision look at me to burn your clothes sometimes it's a decision that you're gonna take because of God maybe you have to stop doing what you are doing Maybe we're going to stop a relationship that God is not pleasing. This is, there are many decisions. Maybe you have to change your old life. The way you dress to blow your plans can be you, you have to change your, your drope with sensual clothes. And you're going to say, no, I'm going to take out of my life. It's going to cost you something. Maybe you are living an old life and God say, abandon this life, destroy, burn down. No one will live the revival of God if they do not abandon their pet sins. No one. There is no revival. If you don't abandon your pet sins, ah, oh, these sins I can't. I can't. Sorry, Pastor. Okay, one rich man, Jesus called him, and one rich man said, sorry, I can't. What is your answer today to God? What is your answer to God today? Please close your eyes. Are you listening to God? Elijah, or Elisha could say, could have said, no, I can't. And some people, they are saying, no, I cannot burn down. I cannot destroy my plans. But God is calling you, my beloved brother. What is your answer? How many of you will respond to the call of God? How many of you? What is your answer? How many of you? Please, I want you to pray right now. Say, Lord, Lord. I, yeah, you can just pray yourself. And say to him, Lord, I want to 
to destroy everything. I want to burn down what prevents me from experiencing the best, the greater things that you have for my life. Please pray right now. This is your decision. It's not because of your calling. All of you are called by God. But what is your answer? What's going to define your destiny is your answer, not your calling. Many people have been called. You could have a great calling. But what is your answer to God's calling? What is your answer today? Please say something to God. Say something. Beloved Father, we pray. We pray. We ask you, Lord. I, I, I pray for all of my brothers here today. Help us to have the courage, Lord. To burn down everything that prevents us from experiencing these great, greater things that you have for us. Forgive our sins, Lord. Father, there are so many sins among your people. In your heart. In their hearts, Lord. People that are serving you and serving, serving also the world. People that are singing here and singing to the world. People that are loving you and loving the world, Lord. Lord, that today they can take one decision. Falling just you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Burning down their past. And using their gifts only for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, this fresh anointing can come over all of those who are now repenting from all their sins. In Jesus' name, Lord, I bless all of my brothers and sisters that are listening to me right now. Bless all, all of them. I pray that fresh anointing can come over their lives, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, we declare this mantle over their lives. And they can be like Elisha. Elisha saying, I, I'm here. You can count on me, Lord. Lord, bless all of my brothers and sisters. I declare everything that is holding their lives to their past be destroyed in the name of Jesus I declare Lord that this church are going to grow this church are going to be used to spread the gospel Lord in this town, in this nation in the world Lord we declare Lord you, you working and moving here among us in Jesus name I declare greater things are yet to come oh the best is yet to come, greater things are coming, miracles are coming, oh fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit are coming, oh one spirit of salvation are, is coming over the nations over our lives oh one great harvest of souls are coming over our lives we declare, Lord, many people repenting and turning to Jesus. Many souls are going to be saved. And we are going to be used for your glory and by your glory. And if you believe, give a big hands of praise to him and worship him. Oh, Jesus, receive this fresh anointing. Receive this fresh anointing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. How many of you responded to God's call? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may you can hear his voice and answer to him. Because greater things wait for you. God bless you. Hallelujah.